social issues. Uh, this is a kind of more merging of uh, the poet and his uh, or her uh, discussion of social issues. Kind of a poet is a liberator type thing. It's called Poetry's Promise. I promise to protest social inequalities. I promise to reveal fundamental truths about human nature. I promise to glorify my muse and her friends. I promise to lambast, reprobates, and exhaust the spirit of crime. I promise to be an ultimatum to all the trouble beleaguering the masses. I am balm to your spirit, O poet, O dreamer. I am myrrh and gold. I am the spirit of darkness encased in light, a bright sun in a cloudless glass box. Thank you. Birdman. I also will be at the midnight reading tonight. This is another poem that I wrote last week. Yes, so when I get to writing, my pen doesn't stop. This one is called Silky Black Skies. Up above where fools dwell on yesterday's past. In the kingdom looking down on what is past. Velvet black skies where there is starlight. Stars twinkle all through the night. Being battled and left wounded in love. Lifting their hearts to the heaven for doves. Standing and watch beneath the silky clouds, a fragile heart speaks to eagles out loud. To search the stars from inside of the mind as a weary heart waits patiently and kind. Now to share a thousand golden dreams, glorious stars fill the sky with a milky scream. So as time ticks away, the good God will not leave you alone. A painter of love speaks to his old world of weary heart of stone. Thank you. <laughs> a 
while back I had a major crisis and I started writing poems to help me through the crisis and then I would read the poems over and over again. And this is one of the poems that helped me. Non-resistance. Tiny drops of water, little rivulets and streams always follow a path of non-resistance, never fighting the force of gravity, seemingly powerless and unable to cause change. They become the greatest force of all. By their silent, invisible power, their choice of non-resistance, canyons are carved, mountains are leveled, Caverns are decorated. The Earth's surface is reshaped. Gradually, slowly, their power demonstrates. They feel no impatience, no demands to speed things up as they carve and rebuild over decades, centuries. Relentless, persistent, powerful. As I contemplate my circumstances, I think of the rivulets of water and I learn from them the lessons of non-resistance and of patience. Like a river, I conserve my energy. I experience my power by not resisting, not fighting the circumstances of my life. The pain of the problem diminishes as I focus on my powers, my sustenance by the source. As I release my demands for control, I feel acceptance, patience, peace, and love in the flowing stream of my life. This energy and power I direct to reform my life, my character, not to reshape ills of society, but to release my own anger and fear, my own worry and control, so I can know my flowing beauty and feel deep peace. Now I feel the energy. Now I feel the flow, pulsing, powerful, vital. I ignore the mountains, the apparent strength of the problem. Patiently, quietly, persistently flowing, I'm aware I'm an expression of the greatest power that is. Flow on, my spirit. Flow, flow on, flow on. Like the river to the sea, flow flow on, persistent, patient, powerful, flow, flow on, flow on. Interesting, this poem is also about sustenance. It's called Bagel Motorcycles. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to get into the rhythm here. Bacon motorcycles live in fear of the time they call the coming of the butter knife. Yes, the butter knife of the time they call the coming of the butter knife. Cream cheese lurks in the fridge out of sight, laced with onions and chunks of bits of pineapple. Yes, of pineapple, laced with onions and chunks of bits of pineapple. Knife dives laden with cheese, spreads a layer on a wheel of the motorbike. Yes, the motorbike spreads a layer on a wheel of the motorbike. Toasty bagel hop is raised up to lips, crystal teeth come together and they take a bite, yes, they take a bite and uh, it is good. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm Happy Days Poet. Uh, my given name at birth is C. Lynn Carden. Silent Albatross. Seemingly in the albatross, I remain silent. Weighted on my shoulders, burdened on my head. I continue my journey to seek total happiness. As the evening falls upon me and no sunshine is in sight, the tranquility of my mind's thoughts or relief, free of that albatross, free of my thoughts. I wrote a musical called Chantus, and currently I'm working on one with Ron Hewitt over there called Blue Bonnet Road. And I, I don't know if you saw my latest email, but I incorporated that, that last song you sent me. And uh, we're on our way up, up to page 13 in the book of the musical. Um, but Chantus is about uh, 
two young women from Texas who grew up to New York City to be folk singers starting in 1959 and through the 60s and on from there. And, oh, uh, I'm also trying to get together a uh, tour of coffee houses because it's set in a coffee house in Greenwich Village. Uh, a tour of coffee houses in the Austin area have some uh, positive reaction, but no, well, one confirmation from Recycled Reads. I'm pretty sure we'll do it there. But anybody who knows a venue might want to do a three character musical for two hours and maybe a little time for schmoozing and, and eating bagels and drinking coffee or whatever. Anyway, uh, so Johanna and Darcy go to New York to be folk singers. And at first they sing traditional folk songs. And they get to be kind of popular at the Colloquy Coffee House. And they start writing their own things. And they get a bit cocky. They're from Texas. And at one point they sing the song about their adventures in the big city. They say the way people might do it back home. It's called Taxi in the Rain. You can never get a taxi in the rain And it just ain't no use to complain As you watch your mascara flow lightly down the drain No, you'll never get a taxi in the rain Well, I left my car back in Texas They said it's no use in New York That someone will strip it or rip it, or steal it, or tow it away when I park. Manhattan is just a small island. You could walk it in one afternoon. But I wouldn't do it, you might not live through it. And find yourself mugged by some goon. And you'll never get a taxi in the rain. And it just ain't no use to complain. As you watch your mascara flow lightly down the drain No, you'll never get a taxi in the rain And you just can't depend on the buses They're rarely if ever on time And don't take the subway that jostle and run away Or you might be attacked by some slime By some slime <laughs> And you'll never get a taxi in the rain and it just ain't no use to complain As you watch your mascara flow lightly down the drain No, you'll never get a taxi in the rain ba -bum -bum. Thank you Well, I may still be visited by whatever it is I don't know, I must be placed now Ah, we are this was actually written at a sort of pre-festival party we had at Dala's, or Connie's sister. And oh, the, sort of the gang was all there, me, Tom, Bob, Steve Brooks, Evelyn Roper. These are the people that feature in the poem. Bob's got his mood, the sculpt as only he could. Evelyn's come along to sing an original song. Steve's here, same as last year. Sung about a man at the end of a life's wrong, now in an old folks' home. Who, oh, when, when he hears a song he'll find, once more is riding the range in his mind. And a woman who oh, likes to dance, who, oh, like the man, wishes that she had the chance, like in 1949, to walk across Texas one more time. And Bob's having trouble coping, to keep his eyes open. Con is relaxing, the week's been so taxing. Tom sat there listening, his eyes are glistening. And Steve's singing, maybe about cows in herds. I don't know, because he keeps forgetting the words. Oh. Oh. Fantasy to fright. Move, stop, back, make room for the night. Riders roaming the stacks, lemons labeled lovingly, signatures on the back. Authors hiking Paladura, pandering make-believe lives, mysterioso, conspirioso, magnifico construction, roaming the tones. There's no place like home in a bookstore. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
I was here last month, and I uh, went home the next day, and I, Sunday is usually the day that I kind of put all my ideas together, and I had heard such a great stuff here last, last month that I, I wrote a song, I wrote another, and I ended up writing eight songs in one day, but one of the songs, and inspired by all the great stuff I hear from you guys, uh, but one of the songs I was running around the house, and I looked out the back window into the yard, and I saw, you know, some doves out there eating the the seed off the ground that I tried. It was just passing by, and I oh, that could be a song. So this is that song. <laughs> Sometimes I wake up on a dark and dreary afternoon, the sodden grass still brown. Two doves were cleaning up the mess of seed left on the ground. I wish that they could clean up all the problems in our lives. We could have a second chance to start again and thrive. But all this muddy dreaming will not harmlessness regain. No one is innocent, not even doves in the rain. On a dark and dreary afternoon, the sodden grass still brown. Two doves were cleaning up the mess that I had thrown around. I wish that they could clean up all the problems we have now. We could have a second chance to start again somehow. But all this muddy dreaming will not harmlessness regain. No one is innocent, not even doves in the rain. making enemies, hiding in Gethsemane's, waiting for a trumpet you can't hear. Gross insensitivities, hide behind nativities, hands that seek the sky could do so much more down here. On a dark and dreary afternoon, the black and muddy dirt Two doves were cleaning up the mess of what was left of earth. I wish that they could clean up all the problems we create. We could have a second chance to never war in hate. But all this muddy dreaming will not harmlessness regain. is innocent, not even doves in the rain. Yeah. Combat that That was beautiful. But Tom White says that you're innocent when you dream. Um, oh, so I wrote everything that I have here with me tonight um, a few hours ago. I was having an allergic reaction to my friend's cat, and I took um, a lot of asthma medicine and I just kind of passed that on the couch and wrote this in between waking every once in a while. <laughs> okay. um, snapshots of an adolescence. For a while it seemed like I really had an excess of photographs. I suppose that I could attribute this to Jack. One of them I called Jersey Guru and wrote that on the bottom. Jack went to take it in the parking lot sometime during the days he was falling in love with me and I hid the snap from my boyfriend, afraid he would be jealous of the intimacy we shared simply because we talked well together. Anyway, the picture is of me playing Jersey Girl by Tom Waits to a bald and large beaded hippie guy, not much older than us, in hemp sandals and a lime-colored tunic. In the photo, his eyes are closed like he's smelling bread baking in a kitchen, but he's really just listening to me forget the chords in Jersey Girl. Neither Jack or I could take him very seriously. He asked if I wanted him to design my album art. 
Um, and I'll need another short one for him. Um, I see a woman's eye in the shadow made by the speaker mounted upon the wall, and I feel ashamed. I wish I could see other things. It is heavily made up, and the lashes extend across the wall in sprawling, unabashed streaks. Touches the foot of someone sitting. I wonder if they're fake lashes. Or if this woman, or the eye which I suppose probably belongs to a woman, just grows lashes at an alarming rate. Mm -hmm. It has mostly to do with the way the light strikes and splits around the speaker mounted upon the wall. I think it is very beautiful, and I wonder if people would prefer that I be beautiful. I wonder this because shale is the only thing more distracting than my own sordid fantasies of making love to a giant streaking eyeball, or better yet, a mass of ragging toes. And at this point, I feel his hand brush mine beneath the table, and I know that even if it was unintentional, he would want me to think otherwise. I am a plodding, sensitive bore fantasizing about shadows, and I hardly wonder at what it's like to be well-adjusted. I brush his hand back. <laughs> I'm going to do uh, the version Keep the World Stain, uh, which is more the Acuvel Pella version. And Ron did a fantastic job on this, on his creation. Or our creation, one. Yeah. yeah. Keep the World Stain. Sing me a tune with this thing. Sing a light, delightful lyrics, sailing along musical harmony. Sail drifting love melodies, drift my soul in pure sunshine, feeling lasting power vibration, vibrate those dreams to the heart. Floating on sensual sound sensation. Play me a song with a sting. Playing a chorus in pure tranquility. Plucking with heartstring motion. Pluck the rose in love me emotion. Drift my soul. In pure sunshine, feeling lasting power vibration, vibrate those strings to the heart, floating on sensual sound sensation, sting me an ecstatic love potion, in a vibrating love lotion. That tingles in pure pollination, blossoming forth the feminine flower. Into the lovers, sing a sting song for forever, forevermore. And I love you for forever, forevermore. Um, about a liberation run experience. Yeah, Use the mic. Oh, behind you. There's one behind you, too. There you go. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> Sweet potato fries are awesome. The best of both worlds. The fat greasiness of the french fries and the abundant nutrients of sweet potatoes. Behold, thine eyes of mine, witnessing a symbiotic mixing of cultures where the healthy blends with the hedonistic. It can really blow your mind. And it complements this bison burger quite nicely. Sweet potato fries and chipotle mayonnaise. Mm. Mm -hmm. My new guilty pleasure. Mm -hmm. And to all you vegan health nuts, I cooked those fries in canola oil. <laughs> so there. 
I can finally indulge without the guilty conscience. So can I have a burger with a side of sweet potato fries? Oh, you don't serve sweet potato fries? No! So that was a show. And I have one more show if y'all don't mind. Go ahead. This is, this is on a totally different subject. The way your face feels, the sound of your voice, to the taste of your hair, I will never forget you, no matter how hard I try. The good for nothing, empty promises, I wish I could forget, but you put a stamp on my brain that I can never wash away. Scrub my mind with Brillo, yet the stain still remains. I wish Men in Black was real. That the memory eraser thing would come in very handy right now. Memories gone in a flash. Is that the way Mother Nature intended? Right. Thank y'all very much. Oh, thank you all for coming to the Barsfest preview. Uh, those of you who can make it up to La Mesa the last of April, I um, would love to see you and yeah, go with the spirit. If you want to be there, then come and help us with the changes. And if your spirit takes you somewhere else, change where you're at. Thank you. <laughs> all right.